Thank you very much, Lenka. Cool. So yeah, I mean, first of all, just want to say thanks to everyone for joining us this evening. Um, thanks for having me. I'm excited to, to do this. Uh, sorry, I had to reschedule it. I was suffering from quite a bad migraine um, last time. So, you know, thank you very much for your patience. And thanks for those of you that have come back to join us for this evening. So yeah, so how to get started on making videos with impact for your business. Now, so first of all, what I just wanted to start with is just telling you a little bit about my journey with video. So I worked in the film industry for about 18 months, whereby I was working as a first assistant director, um, which is everything but assisting the director, really. It's focusing on logistics and scheduling and um, taking care of the crew, you know, making sure the crew morale is high um, to ensure that everyone can get, you know, what it is done that we need to be um, done on the shoot. Um, but through my time working in that kind of field, I, I didn't really feel like I was fulfilling my kind of creative needs really. Um, and I kind of reached a point where I, I thought I want to step back and try something different. And I was always writing screenplays um, on the side and directing some short films as well. Um, but I realized that I wasn't going to be able to start a career in that, at least, you know, in the short term, that would be something that I'd work as a hobby until I get to a point where I can start actually earning money through that. So I made the decision to um, start working in my local area, back in my kind of hometown area um, of Sandy and St. Neots um, and around the Bedfordshire area, uh, creating videos. And I kind of stumbled into it actually. So I was going through this period where I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And my sister saw a post on this, um, on this platform, Facebook called Cam Creatives, where someone had posted saying they need a video created. And I had a camera, I had a mic, and I think that's pretty much all I had. And I was like, let me just try this out and see what happens. So I got in touch with a guy and uh, the job went through and I borrowed some extra kit for my friends. And again, like Lenka said there, I pretty much just winged it, but I really enjoyed it. And, you know, I left that shoot and the client was really impressed. And I just felt like this is something I want to do, you know? So from there, I continued working with that client and started meeting other people, um, started building sort of a name for myself in that kind of field. Um, I met with Alex Hughes, who's the founder of Shifties, um, and he introduced me to a lot of uh, really interesting people and different businesses. And I started working more with small businesses. And that's really where I found my niche um, because I, I just found that I was getting that kind of fulfillment in terms of that creative side that I wasn't getting before. And the thing that I really enjoyed about um, that new kind of field of working with these people is that more often than not, it was the first time that they were actually creating videos. So I got to kind of open that door for them, if you like. Um, and for me, that was really enjoyable. And something that I noticed, though, over time is that there was these common kind of barriers coming up um, around confidence on camera, which I completely empathized with because I put off anything like this for pretty much as long as I could. Uh, I mean, actually, this is the first time I've ever done a live stream, so I'm definitely jumping out of my comfort zone tonight, um, which is a, a theme that I'll be talking about a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so like I said, I was working with small businesses, really enjoying it. Um, and then lockdown came and suddenly I couldn't create videos for people anymore. So with some much needed encouragement from Alex, I decided to do a video challenge, a free video challenge. Um, which I ran in shifties. And again, I just, I loved every second of it. Um, I put it off for literally like two years, to be honest. I was just talking and talking and talking about doing it, but pretty much finding every excuse I could um, not to. Um, but I finally put myself out there, recorded a bunch of videos and um, helped a lot of people. And that's when I realized that, you know, there's a whole other area that I could be helping people where it's not directly creating videos for them, but it's helping them kind of, you know, making their own and helping ease them into that process and, and make them realize that actually creating videos isn't that hard and it can be a lot of fun too. So it kind of became my mission to, you know, break down those barriers that I mentioned earlier um, and, you know, get people excited about creating videos really. So that more or less brings me to where I'm at at the moment. I ran a second video challenge and I am going to be gearing up for my third one at some point soon as well. Um, right now, I'm, my main priority is actually um, creating a web series for Shift Momentum. But uh, as I say, I am kind of developing that next kind of video challenge at the moment because it's definitely something I want to continue doing. 
So that is generally, that's, you know, in a nutshell, that's my journey in video. Um, and I use the word journey because it, it really is a journey. It's not something that you can just pick up, you know, in an instant or overnight or even in a, a week or two. It's something that you need to work on. It's something that you need to develop over time. Um, but it, it definitely, you know, gets easier. And as I say, you will reach a point where you are actually enjoying it. Um, I never say practice makes perfect because there's no such thing, but practice makes you better. And that's definitely good enough. So that's that. Now, next up, we have here, why video? Okay, now, if you're joining us tonight, then I'm sure you already understand the power of video and what it can do for your business. But I'll get to the statistics. But firstly, I just want to talk about what it does just on a, on a personal level and on a kind of a people to people level. Um, so it enables you to share your message first and foremost, which is, you know, one of the most important things. Uh, and it enables you to do that with impact, um, in a way that you're never going to get if you just, you know, putting posts out with written word, right? Being able to actually speak on camera, um, in terms of communication, it's just far more effective. So it enables you to build strong connections. Now, one of the things that actually shocked me after the first video challenge I did, and just to give you some context, the way that plays out is that it's a five day thing. And each day, everyone that uh, participates, all they've got to do is upload a very short video of around one minute, whereby they simply answer a question about themselves and their business. And at the end of this five day event, we all had a quick Zoom call where we all got to um, you know, just kind of celebrate everything that everyone had achieved. And this was the first time we were actually speaking to each other. But the crazy thing is, we all felt like we knew each other really well. Um, and that's, that's, you know, the main point here is that if you put videos out into the world and use them for your business, then a byproduct of that, which I never really even comprehended when I started this is that you're building a relationship with your audience. And then that means that before you even speak to them, they already feel like they know you. And that is immensely powerful. So next up, we've got that you can reach more people, of course, um, which you know, is a given. Being able to use target advertisements now, sharing your content on social media, you're able to really share your message and um, ultimately through all of these, make more impact, which is you know, what, what we're uh, hoping to achieve from through this session. So those are kind of the most important aspects to me. And then from there, of course, we've got some statistics here as well, in case that wasn't enough, uh, so Facebook videos receive on average 135% more organic reach than a photo, which is a huge amount. That is a big number right there. Um, and it's not to say that photos don't have a place. It's just that, like I said earlier, if you want to get your message across, the most effective way is 100% through video. So then we've got native videos on Facebook have 10 times higher reach than links to YouTube. Again, so one thing, a common mistake I see often is that people just share a link to their YouTube video, but Facebook actually wants to keep your videos on Facebook. Um, so that might be something you might have experienced in the past. Hopefully that's one takeaway that you'll get from today. So next up, we've got that Facebook users gaze at video five times longer than static content. So when you're scrolling through your newsfeed and you see that video, and I'm sure everyone sitting here watching tonight's found themselves in that situation, you'll watch one video, and then what will happen is you'll get to the end and there'll be another video that will play. And, you know, next thing you know, you've been watching for 20 minutes, right? If it's just a photo or a post, that's not going to happen. So also, this is a really important one now. So having a video on your landing page can increase conversion rates by 86%, which again is huge. Now, again, I'm sure you've visited websites in the past and maybe you haven't got videos on yours yet. But the difference is night and day. When you arrive on a landing page and the first thing you see is a video of the CEO, the founder, or, or even of you know, a, a customer that's used that product or service and they're talking about it, instantly you start building that connection. And it's not something that the audience are even recognizing, to be honest with you. It's something that's happening in the background of their mind. So yeah, having videos on your landing page nowadays is an absolute must. And that's something that we'll be focusing on a little bit in tonight's session as well. So why not video? This is a good question, right? And uh, perhaps some of you in here, maybe you leave us in, in the comments um, to let us know, but maybe you've been facing some of the barriers that I'm about to uh, explore. 
I don't have the confidence. Now this is the biggest one and I honestly can empathize. Uh, it's not easy. It doesn't come naturally to, I don't think it comes naturally to anyone. And if it does, then you're very lucky. Uh, talking to a lens is weird, right? I mean, we're, you know, we're so used to speaking to people and having eye contact. Um, and yeah, it, 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 it can take time to get used to that. Um, but I've actually found it can be quite therapeutic too, which again is something I'll talk about a little bit later. So confidence, number one main barrier that I've found through my time working with small business owners. And again, through the time that I spent doing these video challenges. Next up, I don't have the skill. Again, completely understandable. It can be so intimidating, the lights, you know, the audio equipment, the cameras, all of this stuff, the editing, you know, then what to do with the video. It's, there's a lot to it, right? So it's completely understandable that people are scared, to be honest, just from the sheer aspect of, wow, I've got to learn all this stuff, you know? Uh, and this then builds perfectly to the next point. I just don't have the time. And as we know, time is the most precious currency we have. So, you know, here's my next point though, right? Is that once you learn this stuff, you'll find it doesn't actually take as much time as you think. And they are, you know, lifelong skills because yeah, sure. Equipment is always getting upgraded. I mean, as soon as you buy a new camera for me, for example, I got a few cameras, uh, but as soon as you buy one, you leave the shop and now it's old tech, right? Cause there's always new things coming out. But, once you learn these principles, then that's it. You know, you can apply them to whatever equipment you're using for years to come. Just gonna have a quick sip of water out right here. So I don't have time. Now let's rewind a second. And I'm not gonna dive into this too deeply because um, I don't wanna take too much time on this, but right now in 2020, we are, in a very um, privileged actually position in regards to what we can do with video, right? Back in the day, things weren't quite so um, clear. So if you wanted to create a video for your business, you know, you'd have to go out and buy uh, an expensive camera. You'd have to spend a lot of money on audio equipment. You'd have to spend a lot of money on editing software. And then once you've created your video, what are you actually going to do with it? What are you going to burn a load of DVDs? You know, back in the day it was a lot harder so the point i'm trying to make here is that while there are these barriers that i completely relate and empathize with um, and believe me i have them myself but right now with what we can do with our smartphones in our pockets this little thing right here honestly it is magnificent we have such an advanced camera in our pockets at all times um, and that's a luxury that you know back in the day we wouldn't have had so all of this leads me to say that today is the day. Right now is the best time to start creating videos. So next question, how can you start gaining results with video? And also, yeah, do feel free to leave some comments. Um, it would be great to hear from you, you know, some of the other barriers you might have faced or if you have personally faced some of the barriers that I've spoken about so far. Um, I'd love to hear you uh, with regards to that. So, how can you start gaining results with video? So what I'm going to do next is just walk through a few different types of videos that you can create, because as I'm sure, you know, there are a lot, right? Um, and this is just a condensed list. There's, there's so many different types, but I'm just going to focus on a few that, um, that I've produced myself in the past for clients that have done really well. So first up, we've got explainer videos. Um, now these are great, um, for just getting your point across. Uh, these can, you know, sit on landing page, landing pages, for example, generally around 60 to 90 seconds. Um, they can be longer. That's not fixed. But uh, as again, I'm sure you know that our attention span is just depleting. I think we're officially, we have a lower attention span than a goldfish, which I think is like, like four seconds or something. So it's a little bit crazy. Um, but yeah, an explainer video, for example, let's say that it's sitting on a landing page. Um, that's the first thing the audience are gonna see when they arrive. And it offers insight into what you have to offer and what your product or service is and how you can help them, which is great because it's gonna save you time. Um, and at the same time, it's gonna begin building a relationship with your audience without you actually having to have that conversation yet. 
Now, this means that when you do have the conversation, like I said earlier, they feel like they already know you a little bit. So like I said, it, it saves time. Um, I'm sure you found yourself having to answer calls or emails. Um, emails is the killer for me. I've spent so much time in the past just writing emails, answering questions. Um, and if you've got some of these explainer videos out there sitting on your website or maybe going out on social media, it's going to save you a lot of time. Also, like I said a little earlier, that if you've got one of these sitting on your landing page, that can increase your conversions by up to 86% too. So that's explainer videos, and these can really be anything from um, focusing on your product or service, focusing on how to actually use your product or service, um, and, and you know, various other things as well. So next up, we've got social media snippets. I think these are probably my favorite type of video to create. Um, typically, these are something that's been repurposed from another form of content. So if we take our explainer video, for example, um, let's say that we've got one of these sitting on our landing page and that just simply walks the audience through the product or service you offer uh, and tells them a little bit about yourself, your why, your what, your how, um, those really important things. And now you want to pull out a few little social media snippets from that. So these typically are no more than five to 15 seconds, which I know it sounds crazy, even a couple of years ago to say that I'm going to create a five second video just sounded bonkers. Um, but that's where we're at in terms of our attention spans. Uh, also, the reason to why you want it to, between 5 to 15 seconds, ideally, is because this is the, um, the ideal length for running Facebook advertisements as well. Uh, meaning that, again, if you decided that you wanted to then launch one of your repurposed social snippets as an advertisement, it's already set up and optimized for that. So these are being used to hook our audience in. So again, let's say that we've got our explainer video. And we want to run a little um, social media snippet that's going to hook our audience in and then drive them to that explainer video. Um, and again, like I say, they're great for repurposing content. And again, this is probably the biggest benefit of doing that is that it actually saves you time having to figure out what else to post. Now, I'm a big fan of creating one, you know, one kind of um, long form piece of content uh, and then just pulling snippets out. For example, a podcast. So if you were to record a podcast and you've got your maybe 20 up to an hour conversation, maybe even longer, you can then just pull out a few little nuggets and then post them on your, um, on your, on your channels. And you don't have to then have to worry about actually creating content um, because you've already done it. So next up, we've got social media videos. Now these are ranging anywhere from five to 60 seconds. Um, it's just a general rule. It doesn't mean it's got to be fixed within there. Um, but again, social media particularly, if you are trying to reach your audience there, then you know, their, their attention span is so low. And, and you know, as they're, they're scrolling through that kind of bottomless um, newsfeed, um, oftentimes they don't have that much time to dedicate. So around five to 60 seconds is probably best. Uh, these are great for just quickly sharing a story or an idea and connecting with your audience that way. Um, just recording on your phone, you know. Uh, and again, you can use them in the same way in that you can drive traffic elsewhere. And again, it, it's just creating that immediate connection with your audience. And, you know, you look at, for example, if you have an idea and, you know, you could write out a post um, or you could post a, a photo, but again, it's taking the audience more time to then register that and sit there and read it versus you just coming in straight away. I've got this great idea that I really want to share with you. You know, you say that, that hooks them in versus just having to read the text. Um, and that's ultimately it. When you're posting videos and social, it's really just about getting their attention as fast as you can. So that's that. Next time we've got products or service videos. These are another one of my favorites. So if you are, for example, a commercial cleaning company and you've got a wide variety of cleaning services, then these are really um, great for those types and many others as well. That's just an example. Uh, duration rise around 30 to 60 seconds um, is ideal. Uh, these can be posted on your landing page. They can be posted in socials, on Instagram highlights, anywhere really. Um, but the great thing about these is, again, they're just answering questions before you get to speak to the client, which just means that you're saving time, you know, you're saving your team's time. And again, I'm gonna keep saying this, <laughs> is that it's then building that relationship with your customers before you've even actually spoke to them. 
So yeah, around 30 to 60 seconds, um, offering insight about the specific products or services you offer. For example, if I'm looking for a deep clean um, for a, a commercial property, then you know, being able to just watch a quick video where it just summarizes uh, what it is that you offer through that service, um, it's going to help me make a more informed decision. And well, there you go. <laughs> uh, like I said, saving time from then having those lengthy emails or phone calls. And this is the thing as well. Again, I'd be curious to hear from you in the comments um, if you have found yourself having to repeat the same answers, because I definitely did for a while. Um, See, so yeah, I'd be curious to hear about that. Like, and if you have, just think about how much time, you might dread to think about it, but just you know, think about how much time you may have actually spent answering those questions a few times, um, and then what else you could do with that time as well. So moving on from there, we've now got testimonial videos. Now these are, again, another favorite of mine um, because the thing is it's, you know, it's great, it's great to go out and talk about what you're passionate about, right? It's great to talk about what it is you do as a business. Um, it's brilliant, but to be able to hear it from the perspective of someone that's actually used your product or service, you know, from someone that you've been able to help, then that is, you know, almost like the icing on the cake. Um, because whoever's watching, you know, they may be facing similar struggles to that person um, was until they use your products or service. So yeah, testimonials are really, really powerful. Um, and again, you want to be ranging between 15 to 60 seconds um, in terms of where you want to distribute these. Again, like I said before, these are great for landing pages, um, but also great to be run a social media snippet, social media ads. These are brilliant to sit on your Instagram highlights as well. Um, you know, you can get really creative what you do with those highlights. Um, so you can, you know, arrive at uh, a brand's Instagram page. And in those highlights, you've got, you know, testimonials, you've got brand videos, you've got frequently asked question videos. Um, yeah, there's loads you can do and loads of places that these types of videos can go. So again, it offers that um, firsthand experience of someone that's actually been through whatever process um, a service that you offer. And like I say, I'm going to keep saying it, but it just helps to strengthen that relationship as well with, with your brand. Okay, so I've already covered that one about audience um, watching someone else that's facing perhaps similar challenges that they are as well. And of course, then with the targeting that you can do with advertisements, you know, if you could get your five to 15 second little advertisement made up with a testimonial, target that towards people that are in a similar situation, um, then, you know, you can get some really incredible results. Brilliant. Then we've got some internal training videos. These are great as well. Um, for example, currently what I'm doing is, uh, I mentioned earlier, I'm working on this, um, this, this project with Shift Momentum at the moment. And part of that has involved training someone in video that is coming in from absolute scratch. So they've had zero experience beforehand. Um, and for me, it's been a, a really um, awesome experience. Um, that's the first time that I've trained someone in that, that side of the craft. Um, and as I've gone through, we've been taking notes and we've looked to create kind of instruction manuals and stuff like that. But once we come to the end of that, we will go that one step further to actually create some video resources so that when more people come into the team in the future, um, we can just, you know, give them these courses if you like, uh, and they can just sit and watch those. So yeah, no specific duration, um, anywhere really, I suppose from 10 minutes up to 60 minutes. And you can have a series of modules in these as well. Um, yeah, like I said, brilliant for recruitment, saves you absolute bags of time. Um, yeah, they're, they're brilliant. And I think this will be the last one that I'll cover in terms of the different types of videos we could create. Another really powerful one here is your frequently asked question videos. Now, again, I'd be curious to hear from you how many questions you get asked um, in your business and then how many times you're having to repeat those same answers. Uh, so yeah, anything from how do I switch this thing on? How do I clean this water tank? I mean, I'm just completely freestyling on that one, but, um, you know, these are really powerful just for answering those little questions that often come up in your business. Yeah, anywhere from 15 to 60 seconds. 
of course you you know you want to just keep in mind people's attention spans of this um yeah answers those regular questions saves time having to repeat and again as i say i keep saying it but it builds that connection with your audience as well um a great thing with frequently asked question videos is that it it it's offering them value, you know, I mean, all of these types of videos do, but with this one, it's, it's, you know, that extra layer of value that you're offering your audience um, in terms of just helping them with whatever frequently asked question it may be. And this doesn't have to be something that comes after a sale. This can be stuff that's just educating your, your market um, beforehand to again, help them make a more informed decision when they're looking to purchase. So, that's all of the videos. I'm wondering, Lenka mentioned earlier, we might do some pauses here and there and maybe answer some questions. So I'm wondering if that might be a good time to do that. Um, Lenka, if you want to let me know, otherwise I'm happy to crack on. I haven't seen a question yet. So if there mm -hmm. anyone who has a question about this, like what types of video, um, mm -hmm. you know, what is the best for you, then let us know. I just thought when you were showing the stats in my yeah. programs, there was a, I remember that it used to be said that by yeah. 2020, 80% of all the online content will be video. Yeah. Who the hell knew that in 2020, pretty much all the content will have to be video because we yeah. will not oh, be yeah. able to see each other in person. Of course. Um, so there was a very interesting kind of a point that my brain just made to be that it used to be for a long time there was statistics and analytics showing how popular video is reaching to the point of literally there's nothing else for us these days and it really helps people especially if they potentially can't come to your shop physically you mm. can't physically meet with them for a consultation to mm. really allow them to connect with you on the human level by showing your face showing yourself interact looking them in the eye in a way by looking at the lens and mm. just talking to them so um, absolutely i mean it's yeah and and building on that as well like the principles that you'll learn through this process can 100 percent be applied to your zoom calls you know your client calls where you're doing them through um through the wi-fi through cameras etc um, they're principles that can be applied to that too but no yeah that's a great point Lenka. it is crazy where we're at in terms of video it's uh yeah I would say let's go ahead and continue if anyone has any awesome. questions. I just noticed that Krishna commented. So yep. regards to getting video testimonials, what would mm -hmm. you say is the smoothest process? Get a client to send something over or set something yeah. up? Good question, Krishna, especially since we've yeah. done this together for Cambridge Social Media Day just a while ago. So hopefully <laughs> we'll get a tip from Tom how to do it better next time. Yeah, I mean, um, it's where we're at right now, 100% just getting people to send in something that they shoot on their smartphone. Um, so what I'd recommend is once we've gone through this process, you will have some kind of top tips that you can walk away with. Uh, and then it's just a case of sending them those very simple guidelines to follow. And when we're talking literally like just super simple things, you know, just how to kind of frame the shot, um, you know, what to you know, who to kind of visualize when you're speaking to the camera, asking them a few prompt questions as well. Um, and then you're going to get some great results. Also, what I'd recommend is when you ask for a testimonial, rather than sending them a message, make the message you send them a video of you asking them, um, because you're definitely going to generate better results um, rather than just sending them some, you know, some, uh, some text answers. Um, but yeah, I love funnily it. enough, I just got asked that as well. Um, someone in the hubs asked me if I could send them some kind of guidelines to send for other people. So uh, once I put them together, I'm more than happy to send them out or, you know, put them somewhere they can be downloaded. Yeah. It will be brilliant. Yeah. We have a resource page for this workshop. So we will obviously add um, everything else to that and we'll send it to everyone. Mm -hmm. It will be fantastic. Um, I just see awesome. another message from mm -hmm. Anya who's asking as someone with no experience of creating videos and editing, mm. what can I use at home to take videos and edit them? So I know we will get to editing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll get to it a little bit later, but essentially one of these right here, this is it. Just your smartphone. There's so much you can do from a, a filming perspective and an editing perspective as well. 
Um, and there's a few more extra bits of um, affordable kit that I'll be recommending a little later as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you don't need to worry about going out and buying a big expensive camera at all. You know, where technology is at the moment, you can do all of it in your phone. Yeah, and follow-up comment uh, mm -hmm. from Anya. He said she was recently asked to send in a short video by a recruiter for a role to send in alongside of her CV, which is mm -hmm. a really good point. But these days, lots of uh, companies require online C or online interviews and they require some videos and video mm -hmm. uh, of you kind of pitching yourself. So I think it's really mastering the basics of video. It's never been more important than today so oh, absolutely, let's yeah. get started that's great just out of curiosity as well when they are when they ask you to send that in do they give you any form of prompts or anything any guidelines anything like that or do they just say you know this is what we need you to do go ahead and you know i'll just be curious to hear but we can i'll carry on and then maybe if you um leave us a comment then we could maybe come back to that a little later yeah. awesome cool so where to where to start so I've gone through a few different examples of videos um, that you could create. Um, now, what we can do is we take and explain a video as an example, um, one that could sit on the landing page video, uh, and we're just going to walk through, you know, the, the ways in which you could start just preparing for that video as well. Now, often, you know, it, it's it's easy to kind of just think, right, let's just let's just go for it and you know, wing it which is great, but you need to do some preparation beforehand, which will make the whole process far more easy. Um, so explain a video. So planning your video. These are the questions you need to be asking yourself. What am I trying to achieve? That is the most important one. Um, who am I trying to reach? So who's your target audience and what specific, you know, area of target audience? You might have quite a, a broad range. Uh, what's your message? and when and how should I post it? So for example, with this one, we want to put a landing page video on a website, right? So what am I trying to achieve? I'm trying to achieve um, just sharing what, what it is I do, you know, my why, those things I mentioned earlier, my what, my how, um, and to build, to build a connection with, you know, whoever's watching and ultimately, um, you know, get them to register some kind of interest, whether it's to just get in touch, drop me an email, um, whatever it may be. So who am I trying to reach? So target audience. Um, so if I just go for an example of, let's say that I am building a new online video coaching website and I want this video to be here to say, you know, I want to help you through that video journey. Um, so I'm trying to reach business owners, um, entrepreneurs, maybe, um, maybe coaches themselves. I mean, as you said, Lenka, you know, we, we're having to put ourselves on video so much more now, and that applies across so many different types of um, industries. Uh, what's my message? Well, the core for me in this one would be, um, I think my empathy for where you are at in your video journey, you know, as someone that may be looking to learn more, maybe to overcome some of those barriers. Um, I suppose that's, for me so far, that's the thing that I've noticed has worked the best in terms of my messaging um, is really that I'm an introvert. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not really a, a people person. Um, you know, of course I love people, but I also just uh, love time to myself. <laughs> uh, I need time to kind of, you know, um, give myself a little reboot of energy uh, sometimes. And I think, you know, that, that leads into, the kind of barriers I've faced when it comes to speaking on camera in the past, obviously you've got that kind of thought of like, all oh, this could be seen by hundreds or thousands of people kind of thing. Um, so yeah, my message in this video would be that I understand where you're at and I've been there and I'm still kind of there at the moment, you know, um, I'm not a guru just to kind of highlight here. Like I, I don't know it all. I'm not saying this is how you should do it. Even I'm saying this is what's worked for me and it's what's worked for other people. Um, so, you know, hopefully it will help. And then finally, when and how should I post it? Uh, well, of course, like I said, landing page video, this one, so it'll be on a website. Um, I shoot it in widescreen because I've often found that's the best format for, um, for, you know, on websites, um, on Facebook, for example, you can have square, you can have portrait and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, and of course, in terms of posting, you could create some social snippets for that as well. 
So yeah, those are the core questions. What am I trying to achieve? Who am I trying to reach? What is my message? And when and how should I post it? So you really wanna just give yourself some time to map that out. Um, just put some bullet points down, you know, speak to your partner or, or you know, um, some of your collaborators in your network um, and maybe get some feedback. Uh, and then from there, uh, you want to acknowledge that people only watch a third of a video on average, okay? Now, let that sink in for a sec. Now, like I said about our attention spans, you know, they're, they're, they're going down and down. Um, so it's really crucial that you get your main point across just straight away. So, like I said, put your key message across in the first third. So if you've got a 15 second video, that first five seconds has got to just be an absolute golden nugget hook to get them in um, and to, to you know, uh, get their attention. Um, so some of the key points that you want to focus on when you're creating videos uh, is to speak directly to your audience. So you want to be looking at that lens um, and I'll talk a little bit about some ways in which you can make that feel a little bit more natural for yourself um, a little bit later. You want to keep it short and sweet in your videos, like I say, um, and it's easy to get lost in your head, right? Of just overthinking things and, oh, I can't do this and, and all these kind of voices that go around in your head. Um, so you want to focus your attention away from yourself and more on the person you're trying to help. So when you record your video, you really just want to focus on who that target audience is and really, you know, narrow it down, give them a name, like, it, you know, create a whole persona about them. Um, and that's definitely going to help. And then lastly, be yourself. It might be hard, you know, it might sound like it's hard, but you'll get there eventually as long as you keep practicing. So those are kind of some of those key points to just consider as you're starting to prepare um, and plan this, this, you know, this video. So the structure of a video. So starting with your why, if we've got any uh, Simon Sinek fans, watching, um, they'll know the importance of why. Um, it's a lot of people go straight into what it is they do, um, but very, you know, and I suppose more people probably now, but it's great to start just with your why. Why is it that you're passionate about what you do? You know, what are your core values, your beliefs? Because ultimately that's the thing that's gonna hook people in. That's the thing that's gonna separate you from the other people. Um, and, you know, again, going back to building that connection, People buy from people, right? So then talking about your how, um, you know, how is it you actually get to achieve what it is that you believe, you know, what, what, what it is that your mission is. And then from there, your what, what is it you actually do to provide that? And then finally ending with a call to action. I'd recommend pretty much always ending with a call to action, whatever type of video you create, even if it's a frequently asked question, and it could be as simple as saying, if you've got any other questions, um, feel free to check out our library of frequently asked. If you can't find what you're looking for, do feel free to drop us a message, a DM, et cetera, et cetera. Um, those are kind of the, the, the four key points that I always try to get across um, if I'm creating this explainer video anyway. Uh, and then, like I said, call to action is something I put on most videos anyway. So, yeah, essentially, if you imagine you just land on a, a website um, for a company, you're looking in, in the market for going back to commercial cleaning, for example, you watch this video that's um, there when you arrive. And, you know, the first thing you get is the founder or the CEO, you know, talking about their core beliefs and why it is that they're doing what they're doing. Um, that's going to really hook you in and, and, um, and start building that kind of connection. So next up, we've got the power of bullet points. Now these have definitely saved my, uh, saved my life a few times. I mentioned earlier about how it's easy to get wrapped up in your head, which I still do to this day. Um, but when it comes to getting your message across, don't worry about writing a script. Um, and we can talk about that later, but I've personally found the best way is to just write bullet points and wherever your phone is, wherever you're filming, just put, you know, a piece of paper or whiteboard, whatever it is, just get those key points across and just put them next to the camera so you can see them clearly. Um, and, you know, that way you're not going to kind of get too wrapped up in what it is you're saying. Try and keep them as brief as you can, just simple. So moving on to how to record your video. I just want to open up if there's any um, potential questions that are coming up. Uh, if you just let me know, Lenka, and otherwise we'll dive straight in. There was one thing that was on mm -hmm. my mind, one question, okay. and that's how can I get more natural in front of a camera? Cool. Um, especially when it comes to recorded videos. 
I can do mm. something like this when it's more of a conversation, it's yeah. live, but, mm. and there obviously are people. So I'm actually talking to you people. For me, it's similar to yeah. standing on a stage. But when yes, yeah. I just place the phone and then mm. I want to record something, I just go blank. Yeah. No, I totally understand that. It's interesting for me. I'm the opposite. I actually find this more difficult for me to do than if it's just with a camera, um, because I always have that knowledge that I know I can edit things out. Right. Um, but no, it's, it's a great question. It is something we're going to cover a bit more in depth later, but generally speaking, the, 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 the key with this one is the, the number one sort of golden rule is to just practice. It's as simple as that. The more you do it, the more comfortable you'll feel. Um, but like I say, we'll, we'll delve into that one a little bit later. Um, so yes so if unless there's any others then i'll um crack on with this one go ahead i can't see awesome one. wicked so how to record your video this is uh this is you know the the meat right here right so this can sound a little bonkers the flab rule okay now bear with me i'll explain so uh, i came up with this to be like a little mat a mantra right um and it consists of four elements um, that you can remember as every time you're setting up for a video. So we've got this little graphic right here. We can share this in the, um, in the resources. Um, so I created this just as a simple way to remember the core kind of things that you need to think about. Um, so you've got framing, you've got lighting, you've got audio and background. As I said, it, it, for me, it really has become a mantra and for other people that I've um, worked with as well, um, just that when you are setting up, you know, you haven't kind of got to worry about, oh God, what have I got to do? What have I got to do? You just take a breath. You think, right, framing, lighting, audio, background. That's it every time. Cool. So that's that. And let's start with framing. So how to frame your shot. Um, what is framing? It's essentially just setting up the composition, setting up, you know, where you're positioned in the frame. Um, you know, what can be seen in the background, etc. So Here's a little hack, which, uh, which is good if, if you find yourself in a situation where you don't have a tripod and you, for whatever reason you can't have a tripod, maybe you've gone away somewhere, you wanna shoot a sit down video, uh, maybe there's two of you, you wanna get in a shot and holding the phone just doesn't quite, um, isn't quite suitable, um, you could try this method. <laughs> it's been it's surprisingly effective actually. However, I do highly recommend everyone watching buys a tripod. They're super cheap now, you can get them off Amazon um, and, you know, they, they will definitely, um, definitely help you out immensely. Now, why do you want a tripod? It's fine holding your phone, um, but you're going to find yourself in situations where maybe you're creating more of a longer form um, video and well, simply just holding your phone up is going to be your arm ache. Also, uh, it's going to be a lot more static if you keep it on a tripod. Um, it's just one less thing for you to worry about as well, knowing that that's set up over there and you can just focus on delivering your message. Um, yeah, I'll, I've, I'm in the process of creating an up-to-date resource list of equipment, which I'll share into this group as soon as possible as well. Um, so you can go ahead and buy some stuff if you don't already own some of these items. So that's a tripod. Now, portrait versus landscape. This is a question I get a lot of the time. And the short answer is, it's really up to you. Um, I personally shoot in landscape. Uh, the reason being that for me, it gives you more um, opportunity to repurpose content further down the line. Um, if you shoot in portrait, you're kind of stuck to that portrait. Um, you know, you, you can't then make that widescreen. Whereas if you shoot in widescreen, when you get to the editing stage, you can actually zoom in essentially and then turn that into um, a portrait if you wanted to. Uh, however, if I'm filming just Instagram highlights and stories, um, IGTV videos, etc then shooting on portraits, absolutely fine. If it's something that I'm just very quickly gonna do, um, or even sometimes Facebook videos, but for more like landing page videos, frequently asked questions, etc. for me, I'd always um, lean towards widescreen. Also, I've got that kind of filmmaking background. So for me, shooting videos in portrait, I don't think I'm ever gonna get quite used to it. Um, but yeah, just here's a quick example of what I mean. Like if you shoot in widescreen, you can still zoom in and then get either a square or a full portrait framed shot, um, which you can do in the editing stage. So next up, we've got the grid lines. This is something that I highly recommend everyone does if you haven't done already, um, is to simply go into your camera app in the settings and just switch on the grid lines. And what they'll look like is something like this. 
So this is going to be a lifesaver when it comes to framing your shot. There's two main things it's going to help you do. The first is it's going to help you keep your shot level so it's not wonky. Um, and secondly, it's going to help you in terms of understanding where to frame your head within the shot so that there's not too much space above your head and not too little space above your head either. So what you're looking at here is around about the right kind of framing. Um, and I'm just going to show you a quick example of bad framing here. Uh, so the reason this is bad framing is because clearly there's too much space above the head. Um, but what also it does is it's when you're actually speaking to someone in person, it just looks more like this. It's as simple as that. It kind of gives the effect that you're kind of maybe looking down on them slightly. Um, so yeah, that, that's a really easy, quick win that I've noticed so many people get wrong um, just by the simple fact that they haven't kind of been told it. So that's, that's um, framing to start with. And then talking about eye level a little bit. So um, another amazing benefit of having a tripod is that you can position your camera um, exactly where you need it. So this one that I'm using right now is literally at my eyes, meaning that the shot itself is completely level to where I'm looking. So for example, if the camera is a bit too high or low, then you can get these kind of effects whereby this, it's, you, you almost look like you're looking down at the audience a little bit, which is definitely not something you want to be doing. Um, and then also, you know, if it were that you're looking up, it, again, it just kind of gives this slightly strange effect. Um, so yeah, just keeping the camera eye level is um, a really easy thing to, um, to get right. And it makes a big difference from when the audiences are watching it. So front facing versus back facing cameras, which one should you choose? So again, it depends on the circumstance, really. If you're just, um, or say, for example, if I'm on a shoot and I just want to, you know, share a quick idea or just give people quick insights to what I'm up to, then I've, maybe I've not got much time. Then it's, I'll just use the front facing camera um, because I can clearly see my shot. Uh, and if it's only going to Instagram stories or um, maybe IGTV, then I'm not as worried about the quality because you will, in most phones, notice uh, slightly lower quality in the front facing versus the back facing. Now, if your phone is your primary camera and you're shooting these types of videos I started talking about at the start of this session, then you're definitely going to want to use your back facing camera. Um, and you can run a test for yourself to see the difference in terms of that quality. Um, some phones, the front facing is just as good quality, in which case it's not so much of a problem. Um, but for most people using the back facing camera, you're going to notice definitely uh, a boost in quality. It does, however, mean that you're not going to be able to see yourself in the shot, which has some pros and cons um, with it. A, a benefit, for example, is that if you're shooting with a front facing camera, what often happens is you actually look at the screen. So you're looking at yourself rather than looking at the lens. And if you can see on this shot, in fact, you probably can't see it as well with this. I've got the presentation. If I do this for a second, right? So something I want to talk to you about today is why I like producing videos. And it, the reason being that I, anyway, so you get the idea when you're looking away from the lens, it just feels slightly off. It feels like you're not really having a conversation with the audience. Um, and again, that's just a really easy, quick win is to just make sure you're focusing on that lens. So next up, we've gone through framing. Now we're moving on to lighting. Now I'm just going to run through a few simple um, options that you've got here. Now, if you don't have a budget to spend on any lights, then just face a window. It's as simple as that. If, if, you're, if you're shooting indoors, just make sure that you're, um, you're near some lights. If it's in the middle of the, you know, if it's in the evening, then just switch your house lights on. Um, but what you don't want to do is face away from the window because then you're going to get this kind of silhouette kind of effect, which definitely isn't that great. Um, again, it's, it's an easy fix, but it is something I see often. Um, and I think this goes back to what I said earlier about it's easy to just be like, oh, let's just record a video and go, which is great because, you know, speed to market and it, it's great to um, just to kind of follow like an idea you have and just kind of follow that inspiration. But the more you can start to internalize these um, flab tips, um, then, you know, you, you're going to stop kind of making those, um, those errors and in turn make better videos. So yeah, if you've just got, if you've got no budget for lights, then just make sure you're facing a window, um, or you're using some house lights. Uh, and it's pretty much as simple as that. 
but as I say, yeah, so same applies when you're outside, you know, if you're out and it's a nice sunny day, um, just make sure you're facing the sun rather than away because you'll get the same kind of effect of that kind of silhouette kind of um, feeling, which isn't so great. But if you do have a budget, then I highly recommend you invest in some lights. And here's just a couple of options. So you've got these softbox panels um, ranging between 30 to 100 pounds, depending on um, the quality, essentially. Um, most of the time you can buy them in a pack of two, uh, which is probably the best way to go. Um, the reason I recommend these is because they give a very nice soft and even distributed light, meaning that um, you're going to get just a very um, kind of natural light. They kind of resemble the daylight coming through a window, for example. Um, however, they are quite large. They're quite bulky. Um, so it depends on the amount of space you've got to work with because, um, you know, of course, having to set them up and pack them down every time you want to film, it's going to add another barrier. Um, so if you've got space to just keep them up and set up, then great. Um, if, you, if you're running with a little less space, then I'd recommend looking into getting maybe a ring light, which again varies between 20 to 50 pounds. Um, they actually come with a, a smartphone holder, which is great because then you don't actually need a tripod. So you can save a little bit of money with that. Um, and again, these are going to give you a really nice, soft, um, evenly distributed light on your face. Um, what they won't do, so the difference really in terms of the quality of light you'll get is these soft boxes, they'll light the background as well. Uh, they give a much more softer, widely spread light, whereas the ring light's going to focus more just on the subject, which is yourself or whoever's in the shot doing the talking. Um, so your background won't be quite as light. Um, but these are, yeah, they're great if you're traveling, if you're, you know, just as I say, if you've not got much space to work with, um, then they're, they're a great way to go. There are loads of other types of lights, but these are the two that I'd probably recommend looking into um, if, if you're just kind of starting getting into your video journey. So that's lighting. Next up, we've got audio. So what are options with audio? We've got using the inbuilt microphone, which is fine. But what you want to make sure you do is if you're going to use the inbuilt microphone on your phone, then really you only want to use that if you're holding the phone at your arm's reach, because any more than that, you're going to incorporate echo, you're going to incorporate background noise, and it's just going to be harder for the audience to really um, listen and tune in. Um, and I'd actually argue that audio is more important than visuals. Um, it's, yeah, if people can't hear you, it doesn't matter if your image looks great, if people can't hear you, they're not going to watch. Um, so that's definitely something to consider there. So like I say, if you're on a, <clears throat> a job, like if I'm on a shoot and I want to do a quick video, then it's fine to just hold the phone and use the inbuilt mic. But I do recommend investing in something a little bit more professional. Um, there is also a little hack that, that I've uh, used in the past. Now, a lot of uh, headphones, like in-ear headphones, they have a built-in microphone. So you could just wear the headphones and use that mic that way. Um, that will probably give you slightly better sound quality than what you'd get if you're using your phone further away from your arm's reach. Um, but also, uh, you could actually get a bit of tape and actually attach it like a clip-on mic, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, and you can get a similar kind of effect that if you're using a clip-on mic. But for the sake of 15 to 30 quid, I'd say just invest in a, a, a lapel mic, um, which is otherwise known as a clip-on mic. Yeah, these are going to boost uh, your sound quality tenfold. Um, they're really easy to clip on. You literally just clip it on the top of your t-shirt, your jumper, your shirt. Um, if you're using a jumper, you're probably going to need to have the mic facing sideways. If you're using a shirt, you'd have it facing upwards. Um, and yeah, they're just going to give you a very nice, um, very nice sound quality. Uh, and the beauty with this is that if you wanted to move around, you then have the opportunity to. So yeah. This one, um, 15, 30 pounds, it's going to be a wired mic, and that means that it will plug directly into your phone, um, but you can buy extension cables as well, uh, meaning that if you want it to be a bit further away from your phone, you can do that. You can even get wireless um, receivers and transmitters. Now, I know this sounds a little, it's getting a little bit technical now, but there's a super simple setup that I'm actually using right now called the Rode Wireless Go. It averages at around 150 pounds, so it's definitely more pricey. Um, but it's a really good investment. Maybe if you're um, a yoga instructor, 
uh, and you wanted to do some of those kind of videos, then what it means is that you can be completely disconnected from your phone and be able to move around freely. Um, and also a great thing about that particular product is that it also has a built-in microphone. So you don't necessarily need to clip on one of these clip-on lapel mics um, as well. So that's, that's some options with audio. Um, now moving on to background, the final one. Um, so really it's the simple rule is you want to try and make sure you've got as much of a decluttered background as possible. So if we look at this, for example, shot in my kitchen, um, so you can see the background's pretty messy. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you've got your Hoover there, you've got your, you know, your lamp maybe is a bit, the bag and, and a few other bits there. Um, if you clear those out of the way, immediately, you know, you notice that it's much cleaner um, and it focuses the audience's attention on you rather than any of that stuff in the background. Um, another thing to raise is that you might notice when you watch a film that sometimes, you know, in the background, it's kind of out of focus, right? which makes the person speaking pop from the background a little bit more. Um, now you're not gonna get anything quite like that with a phone, however, um, to give yourself the best chances of getting a slightly more out of focus background, you wanna be standing as far from your background as you can. Um, that really is just kind of another like icing on the cake if you can, ultimately it all comes down to whatever space you have to work with. So that's, uh, that's some of the background options there. Um, now, some really simple things you can do, bringing in a plant makes a massive difference. Uh, a lamp, you know, some fairy lights, fairy lights look gorgeous uh, in backgrounds. Simply just throwing in some books. I think these books over here, I literally threw them on the table about five minutes before I started. It adds just a little splash of color um, and maybe some artwork on the walls as well. Now, so, you know, if you're filming from home, which I imagine most people will be, then maybe it's worth just kind of going into your living room or whatever space it is that you're looking to use and just kind of having a look at what you've got available, maybe moving some things around a little bit if possible, um, just to create a nice little set. Um, because one thing I'll just highlight, which I touched on earlier, is the more you can set yourself up to have a space where you can walk in, not have to faff about moving things or setting things up um, and then packing them down at the end, the less barriers that will stand in the way from you actually doing what it is you want to do with these videos. So another option you can have for background is to get a white backdrop. Um, these are great because essentially they just give you a clean white background to make you pop from the background. Um, that I would say is useful if you are limited on space or if the, you don't you know, you don't have much in the means of um, set dressing to use, um, but it will ensure that you get a nice, clean, professional look. Um, yeah, like the PowerPoint says, you get these for around 40 pounds. Um, they pop up like a little tent. Um, they're really easy to use. So that's all of the flab tips. Um, so if we just quickly recap on some of those golden rules we've got right here. So in terms of framing, what you really wanna do is make sure that you don't have too much room um, above your head or too little. Um, somewhere around, uh, so the, the example I showed earlier is just about right. Uh, and making sure that you try and keep your camera to eye level as, as possible um, so that you're not looking down or up at your audience. Uh, you want to make sure that you're getting rid of any clutter in the background. Um, make sure you're standing facing a window if, if you're just using window light, otherwise using those, um, some of those lights that I mentioned. And then when it comes to filming from an audio perspective, you just want to make sure that you know, you're in a nice quiet environment. If there's other people in the building, then you just want to just let them know that you're gonna be filming some stuff. Um, you know, ask them if they wouldn't mind being quiet and uh, I'd make sure to close all windows nearby. Um, and if there are other people in, in the house, then maybe just close that door as well, leading into the other areas of the house. Um, one other thing I'd say as well is, make sure you put your phone on silent, definitely. <laughs> That's a very easy win, but it can definitely, um, you know, be frustrating if you end up with a, a ringtone midway. So that is the flab tips. Um, next up, we're going to move on to what to wear on camera, right? Um, but before then, I just wanted to offer up an opportunity in case anyone's got any questions. Um, we've still got a fair bit to get through, so I'm keen to, um, you know, make sure we can get that um, to keep getting through that. But yeah, just let me know if there's anything coming up later. Simple question, um, mm -hmm. where do you find um, the grid settings? Cool. Um, so 
on iOS, you just go into your settings and then the camera app within the settings, from there you're gonna find grid. If you're on an Android phone, I imagine it will be pretty much exactly the same. I'm an iOS user myself. Um, are, you, are you on iOS or Android? Um, Android, yeah. Android, yeah. Yeah, it is. You open your awesome. so you open your camera app and then there's usually the cog wheel with settings and somewhere in there mm -hmm. there is option that to switch on the grid lines. So perfect. Uh, talking about um, the app, would you yeah. use the default camera app or is there mm -hmm. a specific camera app that you would use for videos? Yeah, that's a great question. So the the, the stock camera app is perfectly fine. Um, it, I suppose what I would recommend is starting with the stock camera app while you ease into you know, the start of that video journey, if you like. Um, but if you find yourself wanting to um, learn a bit more of the principles of, of, of you know, video production, um, there are some more higher end apps you can buy that are around 20 pounds. And what they'll do is they'll essentially unlock some of the features within the camera built into the phone um, that are similar to the kind of features you work with when you're actually using a more professional camera. So yeah, it really depends on kind of whether you're interested in learning more about it. Um, it will give you more control over your image, um, but again, it will mean that you'll have to spend a bit more time understanding and learning those principles. I think one of the challenges I had with my yeah. default app was it mm -hmm. wasn't taking in an external microphone so even though really? i plugged in a mic it mm -hmm. still wasn't using it and i had to download a separate app where i could choose which microphone it should use i see yeah well yeah i mean if that happens then it's definitely worth getting a, a stock app um so yeah i think uh, but i mean i mentioned 20 pounds i'm sure there's other apps that you can get that are probably a couple of quid that they probably just won't have quite so much of those features um, but generally speaking, I think, you know, the, the stock app is, is perfectly fine um, for getting started. Yeah. One kind of future proof question I have yeah. with awesome. modern smartphones, removing yeah. the plug for the head jack for the headphones. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, obviously, I do have a lapel mic, which my phone still can take because it's odd. But if I buy a new phone, mm -hmm. what is my best option? than to use if I don't have the to plug yeah. in my phone. Sure. So yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I've got an iPhone XS, for example, and they removed the headphone jack of that. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea, to be honest, but um, you can just buy an adapter that will just turn um, the, you know, the charging port into just a regular headphone port, and then you can use that with any lapel mic. Okay, that's good to know. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. I think cool. we're good with the questions for now, so you can continue. Awesome, sweet. So moving on to what to wear, something that you probably haven't considered, but it is worth um, taking into consideration as you're preparing to create videos. So the good, these are a little bit more pastel than I wanted to find. I was looking for something a little bit more neutral, but generally the key kind of point is you want to go for um, just sort of solid, warm, neutral colors, nothing too bright. Um, because essentially you don't, you don't want to take the attention away from you. So if I just fast forward a sec to this, right. Um, I can see I've actually spelled clothing incorrectly my apologies. Uh, so if we look at these, you've got this bright red, you've got the stripes, you've got the black, you've got the white, right? So the reasons why you wouldn't want to use red is because, um, it's quite bright. And again, it takes the attention off of, of off of yourself. Um, same thing with stripes. I've noticed actually wearing like striped shirts or anything with like um, some intricate patterns on pinstripe um, that actually can have some funny effects on the camera as well, which again can take the audience's attention away from you slightly. Um, the reason to why I would recommend not wearing solid black though is because it absorbs light. Um, so it just, it reduces the kind of texture in the clothing. Um, and again, the reasons why I'd recommend not wearing solid white is because it bounces light. Again, sometimes it can take the audience's attention away from yourself a little bit. Um, so yeah, just sticking to solid neutral colors um, is the best. 
it's again, this one is kind of the icing on the cake. This, you know, it's entirely up to you if you want to um, look into that or not. Um, but I just wanted to include it. So moving on, we've got confidence on camera. I'm sure this is the part that a lot of you, uh, you know, been um, excited to, to hear a little bit about. So I'm going to start with some warm up tips. Um, and, you know, going back to what I was saying earlier that, you know, I'm an introvert and I, I totally empathize with that kind of difficulty and that challenge when it comes to confidence on camera. Um, these are some things that I've found work for me. Stand in front of a mirror and pull funny faces. I know it sounds bonkers, but it just takes you out of your head a little bit. You know, you got, let's say you got two minutes or, or five minutes till you can roll that camera, right? And start recording. Um, and you're sitting there thinking, right, what am I going to say? Well, I've got to remember this and I've got, to, you know, all these things are flowing through your head. If you just take a moment, you know, go over, literally pull some funny faces. Like I said, I know it sounds crazy, but it will take you out of that kind of overthinking phase. Um, and again, spending five minutes just doing some breathing exercises. This is probably the, the most helpful thing. Um, it's worked with, with my clients, both in video production where I've produced videos for them and also in where I've helped kind of coach them um, to make videos themselves. Honestly, just even counting like 10 seconds worth of breaths, just closing your eyes, inhale one, exhale two, and just counting up to 10. Um, that's been an absolute lifesaver for me. Um, and then a, another kind of fun one, which again is a little bit silly, is just shaking out, um, literally just shake your body out, you know, kind of, you know, get rid of that, any of that kind of tension that you might have um, and, you know, scrunching your face. Again, it just relaxes the muscles in your face. Um, those are some uh, warm up tips that I've found and my clients have found work well. From there, we've got another um, really, really important point. So let's say you've planned your video, you know what your message is, you know, you've got your bullet points. Now you're at that point where you're staring at the lens, right? And you're just staring at it. It's like, well, what is this thing? You know, it's not, not a person, it doesn't feel natural. Um, for me as well with this, because I'm shooting on one of my cameras that I shoot, you know, professional videos with and the lens is like this big. So it's even more kind of, at least with smartphones, it's this tiny little, um, I think it's slightly easier with smartphones. Um, but what I would recommend doing is really focusing on your audience here. Um, and like I said earlier, you know, find out who they are. If you don't already, you know, um, I'm sure all of you have, have done a lot of um, development in, in that kind of building a persona and understand your target audience. Um, but for me, it's really helped to actually um, give, give this person a name, you know? Um, so this is Rick. This is, this is Rick. Um, he's a, he's a coffee shop owner and, um, you know, he's in need of some, some video. Uh, he's in need of boosting some confidence, um, when it comes to video. And for me, that always helps that when you're sitting there facing down that lens, you're just really focusing on who it is you're trying to help again, taking you away from yourself. The more you can take the concentration away from you and focus it on other people, the more relaxed you're going to feel. So next up, we've got confidence tips. So this first one here is an absolute lifesaver. Talk about something that you're passionate about and it doesn't have to be related to the video. Now, I know it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but another thing I've found helps so much is when that camera starts rolling, just speak. It doesn't matter about what, but it gets you used to that feeling of just sitting there talking. You know, it, it helps to continue getting you out of your head and just speaking, getting used to that. Um, and then when you feel comfortable, when you feel that there's a natural kind of point, then you can start talking about your subject. So another thing you can do is spend 10 minutes doing something that relaxes you beforehand. It could be drinking a coffee, herbal tea, reading a book, um, you know, whatever it is, um, just taking that time to step away from the space. And I think that's the important thing is to just actually leave whatever environment it is that you're there to, to spend um, doing the filming. Um, and just go somewhere else and, uh, you know, focus on something else before you go into it. It will definitely help you when it comes to just feeling a bit more relaxed. Um, and then, as I've mentioned, just really focusing on who it is you're trying to help. And that's, that's really the key thing is it's that all you're trying to do with this video, whether it's an explainer, a frequently asked question, whatever type of video it is, ultimately you're trying to help someone and that's where your focus has got to be. So, Next up, we've got delivery. So this is, you know, you've warmed up, you've got all your shots set up, you're ready. Um, now you've actually got to deliver whatever it is that you want to say, right? So here's some tips. Now, definitely practicing in front of the mirror. And like I said earlier, practice doesn't make perfect, but it makes you better. And that's definitely good enough. 
Another thing I say is if it is that you're standing up, then I recommend you having your arms at your chest. I get asked this all the time. What should I do with my arms? If you have them at your chest, then you're more likely to gesticulate as we do, as you know, we are speaking to people. If I was sat here like this the whole time, my arms down here, it's just so much less kind of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Expressive. Um, so literally simply just having your hands around here just encourages you to use them. And that applies whether you're standing or sitting. Be enthusiastic and crack a few smiles. Now, this one, you know, it's all you've got to do, I think, really, is focus on your passion, you know. And that's partly, you know, what I did when I was um, preparing for this today. I was a little bit nervous. Like I said, it's the first time on a live stream. But I just focused on, look, I'm passionate about the subject matter, and that's all that really matters. And that started getting me excited rather than anxious. Um, and then finally, don't worry about nailing it in one take. Um, unless you're doing a live stream. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, you know, you've got plenty of opportunities to pause, to cut, all this kind of stuff. Um, what I find works well for me is to just record, just get it out, <clears throat> um, do it again, you know, do it a few times. And then when you bring it into the edit, you can just cut things down, trim it right down. Um, and you know, that, that's going to help you a lot. Don't worry about jump cuts. It's not an issue. Um, and to just explain what a jump cut is, let's say that I'm recording a video. Where I'm like, Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about why video is so important. And then I take a pause. I, you know, and I look back on my computer, what have I got to say next, all my notes, uh, my bullet points, and then I deliver that bit. And then when you get to the edit, you just cut that little middle bit out, stick them together, and that'll create a slight like jump cut, but it's not a problem. Um, it's not a problem. Some people think you've just got to get it all out in one take, you know, don't worry about that. It adds a lot extra stress um, to the process. So next up, teleprompter. Now, this thing is gonna help you a lot. So, um, not everyone finds they need this. Not everyone finds that they work better with this. But um, for me, it's definitely helped a lot in the past. So there's various apps you can get. Again, like I said, I'm in the process of building this more up-to-date uh, resource list, of which I'll share um, as soon as possible. And I'll include some teleprompter apps in there as well. Um, but you can get some free ones. But I think that you'll notice they'll have some watermarks. So um, it's worth spending. I think it's like five pounds, maybe 10 pounds. And what this will do is let's say that you you've tried your bullet points, right? And um, you, know, you wanna try something different. You, you, know, you feel that you're not quite been able to um, get, get all the words across. Maybe you're missing things. So you could write a script and actually put it into this app. And let's say you're filming on your phone. Um, and now this would only work with a front facing camera, unfortunately. Um, but what it will do is it will show the words of the script, it will show the script on the screen right next to where the camera is so that although you'll be looking at the screen it will feel as though you're looking more towards that camera and then you can sit there and rather than having to remember what it is you're saying you're simply just reading it off um, the only thing i'd say though with this is that you have to put more effort into the actual delivery and the tonality of your voice because you're you know you're not as kind of in the moment if that makes sense um, but that is one thing that i'd recommend trying out and seeing if it works for you so moving on to editing. So this is the point where I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load up some editing software. In the meantime, if we maybe open up for any more questions that might have popped up while I'm just setting that up. And then once I've got that loaded, I'll jump back to sharing that screen. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the questions was if you could share your thoughts about sitting versus standing while speaking to the camera. No worries. That's absolutely fine. I will address that. I've literally, for the first time, just looked at my shot and realized that something's clearly happened because I'm super dark in this shot. <laughs> this is the opposite of what you want, people. I'll tell you what, bear with me for two moments. Um, sorry, you're going to have to repeat that question. You're sitting or standing, right? I figure out your lights. I will yeah. give people a minute to ask their questions if they have any. Um, yeah. Krishna said that she's seen, heard that clapping helps. I think yep. it comes to editing. And I know in the past video, Tom, um, where Tom wasn't, where Dan was saying that if you have an editor, then you can mm -hmm. use these clubs to then leave a note to your editor. So while mm -hmm. you're recording, you make a club, you then, you know, keep talking to the camera, but you say, hey, I want this animation, I want this animation, I want this. Yeah, yeah. At a club, you deliver a rest, another couple of bullet points or whatever part of your video, another clap or like flick of the fingers or some high 
pitch sound that will show a spike in the video and you can then really be clear. I do that for my videos where I often roll for a long time in a row when I'm just talking, wrong take, not this take, yeah. not this take. I just always club at the beginning and then continue with the things. So um, yeah. the question, if you're ready with your life. Yeah, yeah, no, let's, let's go for it, yep. Uh, was uh, what are your thoughts about sitting versus standing in video? Oh. So yeah, for me, uh, I actually prefer um, I actually prefer standing because I find that I can express myself easier than when I'm sitting. Um, that's just me though. I think when I'm sitting down, I feel like I, you know, um, it's just I don't know. I, I suppose I just feel a little less comfortable. I like to move around a little bit. Um, so. Yeah, that, that's just me though. Um, but I'd say just try both, you know, just practice with both, see what works for you um, and, and go from there really. That's probably what I'd say to that. Right, I think this is about as good as I'm gonna be able to get my light in at the moment. I've realized I had to run one of them off of a battery and the batteries have died while I was doing this. Well, as well, long as you were sharing your screen, we only saw a tiny little video of you anyway. There you go. No, we were Perfect. focusing on your slides. Um, we right, have another question, which is, oh, oh, cool. what are your thoughts on 360 cameras? Do you know what? I don't have much thought on them because I haven't really got any experience using them. So I can't really help with that one too much. But what I will say is I am interested in looking into them. Once I've had some time to do that and formed an opinion, I will come back and answer that question. They're pretty awesome though. I mean, they're pretty incredible, right? It's pretty phenomenal that that's something that actually exists. Um, so yeah, cool. Was there any other questions? Cause I've just, um, We're good. Got this. good. Okay. Brilliant. So I'm just going to load up some editing software real quick and just, I'm just going to walk you through some like super simple aspects. Um, and then we'll crack on with the, um, the, uh, presentation. So two moments, For some reason it's not coming up on my shared screen. Let's have a little look what we've got here. Huh. Okay, cool. Brilliant. Okay, can you, um, yeah, do you mind just let me know if you can see that all right there, Lenka? Yeah, we are seeing it all right. Perfect. Okay, whoops. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so, um, right, so this is, this is some editing software that I use, right? This is um, Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, but I'm just going to walk through some like super simple, uh, principles that can be applied regardless of whatever editing software you use. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm building that resource list. So I'll, I'll throw some things in there with regards to editing. Um, there's options, you know, you can use your phone, you can obviously use your laptop, your computer, uh, which I would recommend doing because you're always going to have more options there. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you a couple of really quick things, right? So. I'm just going to walk through firstly what this what these elements are right so and um, you know bear with me maybe you've used editing in the past so you may already know this but so this thing here you can see this highlighted blue area around the edges this is called your timeline right so the core kind of um function of this is this is where you actually bring your video together right so what you do we got alex right here from shifties it was a uh, little video we shot the other day just to announce um, Daniel Priestley coming into Shifties for a talk um, to chat a bit about Cambridge Social Media Day. So all I've done, right, is over here on the left, we've got our, um, our project media, yeah? So if you imagine, you've shot your video on your phone or your camera, and all you do is you're just right clicking, right? And this is the same with any software, and you're just simply importing that media in, right? So you've got your, your video file here, and all I've done is I've dragged that straight into my timeline over here, all right? Sorry, it's this one. Yeah, I've dragged that straight into the timeline um, and it comes up there, right? And then you simply, let's say that there's a bit in there that you wanna kind of cut out, right? So if I just hit play for a second and um, you'll have to excuse me for the sound quality. I've shot this with um, an external sound source, but I haven't actually got that file with me here right now. Um, I'm not sure if you're actually gonna hear this anyway, but we will we'll see. If I hit play. Journey, you take me on through this content and the books, the curriculum, and so on. Entrepreneur revolution, right? Up, right? And we've got for an hour doing these documents, all things digital content, and 
So Alex has delivered this pretty damn well. There isn't actually much in there that I'd look to cut, to be honest with you. I think it's actually fine the way it is. But let's just say, for example, right over here, there was a quick, um, I don't know if you caught it. So you can hit, see it this right here. So all I'm doing is I'm essentially expanding this video file clip, right? So that I can see it um, in a more kind of expanded view, right? And if I, if I push this down again, it's the same principles that all, all editing software has this kind of stuff. All this is doing is enabling me to see the, um, to see the audio track a little easier. And I can tell just by looking at this, this is where he says, um, yeah. Okay. Now, one thing that you're probably going to experience as you're making your first videos is that you're going to notice as you're watching back that you probably say, um, quite a lot. And that's something that we just do naturally to fill the silences and our sentences. It is incredibly hard to cut that out. But a byproduct of creating regular videos is you will become more aware of it. And over time, you'll actually find you'll start cutting that out, which makes you a better communicator. So now I wouldn't actually cut this um out, but just for the example of showing you right now how you can, um, I just wanted to walk you through it. Now, if it were that there was quite a long pause and then he said, um, and then maybe another pause, then that's when you'd be more likely, sorry, more inclined to actually choose to cut that. Um, but essentially, just to show you how simple this is, all you'd do is you'd come over and you'd use this, this thing here, right? It's called a razor tool. Again, you know, all editing softwares have the similar kind of tools. And you'd literally just click over the area that you want to start the cut. You drag this over to the area where you want to cut the second half. And all you'd do is click on it, delete it, and then bring this over here. And it's as simple as that. So if you imagine for a moment that this clip on the left is the first, um, you know, the first kind of um, bullet point, if you like, that you wanted to cover. And this bit on the second half is the second bullet point where you've then taken a moment to look at your notes and you want to cut that bit out. That's as simple as it is done. Um, you can then add some audio effects, which again, all editing software will have this, where all you simply do is you highlight the two clips that you want to um, add the effects to. And the reason we're adding this effect is it's just a, a simple fade to help the audio transition into the next bit of audio so there isn't any hard cuts and all you do is you really just go over to your um, your effects and you just add in um, this thing here it's called constant power it may it may have a different name on various other editing softwares but essentially it's the same thing it's a fade all it's going to do is fade the audio from one clip to another and it's as simple as that you see how i'm just dragging that out you can just choose how long you want that fade or how short you want that fade really simple. Um, I'm going to make it really short like that. And that's served its purpose. So I just wanted to show you as well, a couple of um, extra simple things. So let's say that this is our final edited video, right? And now we want to add some music. Okay. Um, I'll talk to you a bit about music. Um, if we get time or what I could do is add some, uh, some resources uh, of where you can get music in the list that I mentioned earlier. But all you literally do is you drag that track from your project media into this track here with the sequences and the timeline. And then you've got it right there. It's as simple as that. Again, now what you'd want to do is in this instance, this music track is very loud. So I just need to reduce the volume of it. Um, this wouldn't always be the case. I'll just quickly reduce that volume. Um, and now if I were to play it, You got some music in the background there. Again, you have to forgive me for the audio. I've not got that extra um, audio file recorded with me at the moment. Otherwise, it would be a lot clearer. Uh, so yeah, that, that's, that's adding in some music. Again, just, just like I added the fade with the, uh, the video track, you can add a fade in at the start so it can fade in. Again, you can choose how long you want that to be. And you can add a fade at the end so it can fade out as well. Now, I just wanted to show you a couple of other really quick things. So let's say that on the front end, you wanted to add a bit of text just to establish maybe what it is that, um, in fact, actually, we'll add the text at the end. So if we want to add a little bit of text over here, um, just to show you how simple it really is, you literally, again, this will be the same universal principles for all editing software. You click on this little, this little sort of text symbol here, um, and you drag a little box over where you've got this kind of preview window and you just simply type. So let's just say 
Cambridge Social Media Day um, 2020. Um, you know, and maybe you could just add underneath tickets available now, right? And then I'm just going to make it a little bit larger over here on the left here. This is essentially your um, where you control um, text or any transitions or effects you put in. And you can simply see here you've got this 100 icon. This is the text size. You see if I hover over there, it says font size. You can just make that font a little bit bigger. And just like in Word or um, Google Docs, you've got these areas where you can choose where it's centered. We'll put it in the middle. There you go, that's great. And then maybe we'll just move it down slightly. And to do that, you go into this area here, it says motion controls, and you just bring it down a little bit. And again, like I say, all of these um, principles will apply to other editing softwares. What I'd recommend doing off the back of this is just simply going on YouTube and I can add some links into this resource list I mentioned. Um, and you'll notice as you're watching some little YouTube um, guidelines on other editing softwares that you'll see, oh, okay, I remember that from what Tom was um, looking at. So we've got this bit of text here, and then I've just got the shift momentum logo here, which maybe I'll just add at the end. So again, just like I bought the music in, just like I bought the video in, you simply drag it into the timeline and drop it in. Now you'll notice, because the shift momentum logo is dark blue color, currently it's against a white background. All I do, right, is I'd bring it up slightly, so there's space below it, I'd then, go into my project media where you've got all of the footage and your, your files, etc. Uh, and all I would do is right click and add a new item, right? Which would be a color mat. Again, you're going to have this on all editing software, super simple. Um, and it will be one thing I probably forgot to highlight is this is the software I use. So it's, you know, it's what professionals use. So it's probably, it, it probably looks slightly more intimidating. Um, than what you'd get if you were to use uh, something that's more of a consumer or a prosumer level. Um, so anyway, I've got this color mat that I've bought in. I just want to choose a color. Let's say we want to make it white. You hit OK. Um, you give it a name. We'll just leave it as color mat for this. And you simply look, just drag it in like you did with everything else. And now you've got a nice white background. And just like you did with the audio, you can add in a video fade as well. Really simply. Um, just by going to video transitions, dissolve, adding in what's called a cross dissolve, which I imagine will probably be named that in, in whatever editing software it might be that you choose to use. And if I add these little dissolves in, you can see that from here when it plays, you can see it just, it just fades nicely into, um, into that logo at the end there. So yeah, that's just a few really super simple principles. Um, it can definitely be intimidating, but um, you know, try not to let it um, you know, seem too overcomplicated. Uh, it really is quite simple stuff. You, know, you just put your video in, cut out the things you might not want, um, and then you bring in some text if you want, uh, bring in some logos if you, if you want to, and then add in you know, some music, again, if you want to. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll mention some resources. <clears throat> in this list that I create. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna close this one down. I'm just gonna stop sharing for just a moment. I'm gonna close this. Um, and come over to, back. oh, sorry, I've gone onto the wrong page. And we come back. Before you figure out your things, there was one oh. question that you might cover or might be relevant here. Sure thing. About subtitles, captions. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we'll definitely cover that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's coming up actually. Awesome. So yeah, um, I think that might not be on the next slide, but it's uh, coming up very soon. Here we go, so packaging your video. So you've, you've prepared, you've shot, you've edited, you've now got your finished video. Um, and uh, I forgot to actually show the export option by the way, but essentially you probably heard the word export before. Um, if you haven't, what it is, is it's just creating that final video file. So once you're happy with your edit, you simply hit the export button and that's gonna create that into the final video file. So now moving on to packaging. So, uh, so this is a video that um, I shot with my sister a while back. I'm sure she won't mind me putting this in here. Um, so let's say we're uploading to Facebook. Um, you're probably gonna get something that looks like this. It might be slightly different now because we did this a little while ago. 
Um, but yeah, you want to just add in a title um, first and foremost and try and keep some, something short, um, but something that's going to hook your audience in. So what she said here, um, so what can you expect from my training sessions? Let me tell you. Um, asking a question nice, so it's kind of um, raising that intrigue for the audience. And then next up, you are going to need to add subtitles. Um, highly recommend it. 85% um, of videos are watched without sound, which is incredible. And it makes me, you know, it makes my heart sink a little bit because, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you pay this money for the expensive equipment for sound or whatever and put your music in and everything, but a whopping 85% of videos are actually watched without the sound on. Um, and that's just people scrolling through the newsfeed. Uh, and of course, they auto play without sound as well. So yeah, subtitles are a, a hugely important thing and you've got a wide variety of options for those. So if you upload your video directly to Facebook, you're gonna find that they have an inbuilt subtitle generation tool, which is actually pretty good. Um, however, I would recommend using rev.com, um, which is, it's a, it's a paid for um, service. It's a dollar a minute, I think it is. Um, but it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's hugely beneficial. Um, it's very quick. So for example, if you're uploading, say, a 15 second video to Facebook, then it's okay to you know, get it to auto generate and then you can make some corrections. But if you're uploading anything longer or if you're uploading a landing page video um, or some of the other longer form videos, then you're going to want to pay for something else um, like rev.com um, because, yeah, the, their accuracy is something ridiculous like 99.5% or something. Um, and they just move so quickly as well. Um, it's always worth double checking before you upload it just to ensure that there aren't any things that got through. But most of the time, um, I've not had any issues with that. So that's rev.com. There is also another one that I've not actually covered in this presentation, but I'll just quickly go through it with you called Zubtitle, which is spelled Z-U-B-T-I-T-L-E. Um, that's a great platform as well. Some of you might have seen some of the advertisements they run. Um, so the great thing about that is that Essentially, if you've got your final video and it's in widescreen, but you want to put it onto social media or you want to pull out a little nugget and you want to put it um, out as a social snippet, you can upload it to subtitle. And what it does is, again, I'm sure you would have noticed videos that have that kind of top um, border and, and the bottom footer um, where they've got the subtitles on the bottom and some, you know, um, some engaging text to hook you in at the top. Now, subtitle does that for you automatically, which is brilliant. Um, in the past, I would have to create these templates and it was a whole thing. It took time. Um, but now you can upload the video directly to subtitle. It will add those bars in. You can choose what your text you want. And then it will also auto generate the subtitles um, using AI. <coughs> and uh, oh, bless you there. And uh, it's, uh, it's pretty damn accurate as well. Um, so yeah, that's subtitle. It's also a paid for um, platform. Can't remember exactly how much it is, but it's definitely worth looking into. So um, then we've got creating an engaging thumbnail. Highly recommend doing this as well. Um, it's, it's fine to just pick out a frame of your video and, and put in you know, some text over it using uh, maybe Canva or something like that. I'm sure a lot of you use Canva. Um, but I'd actually recommend if, if it's a video that you put some time into um, and it's not just a quick kind of you know, off the cuff kind of things, maybe the Instagram highlights I mentioned, um, I'd recommend putting a bit more planning into that thumbnail. So for example, if you're thinking of doing a video on, um, you know, um, of, on why someone should get involved in video from my perspective, uh, or, or here's a better one of the do's and don'ts of video creation, I could have a thumbnail that's got on the left side, you've got um, the things you shouldn't do and what it will look like if you don't, you know, maybe what videos would look like if you didn't follow the, the flab tips. And then on the left, I've got the difference when you do follow them. Again, that's something the audience are going to see and they're going to see that and be like, that's interesting. You know, that's going to hook their attention. Um, and that would be more impactful than if I just pulled out a little frame um, from the video itself. So adding keywords is really important as well. That's just going to help, um, you know, boost your chances of um, getting higher up in your algorithm, showing up in more places. Uh, so, and that's just really simple. Just, you know, pretty much anything related to your video or the target audience you're trying to reach um, from there. Adding in a call to action, I mentioned earlier about pretty much just adding one of those in whatever video you do, um, it's worth doing. Um, it can be really simple, it could be more targeted. Um, it's crazy the difference you'll see if you don't add a call to action. For example, if you start a YouTube channel, just simply saying at the end, 
Um, hey, if you enjoyed watching this video, you know, I'd really like it. If you wouldn't mind just leaving me a like and a comment, I'd love to hear from you, um, hear about, you know, what you, your views are on this subject. And also, um, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when the next video comes out. You'd be surprised the difference you'll get if you didn't do that. Um, it can make your subscribers go up um, quite a lot. So yeah, call to action, really important. Interestingly enough, in this graph, it states that the middle is the best place to put it, um, bearing in mind that you know you, you, people's attention spans low and that you need to hook them in those first kind of third. Um, the middle is around where people would start to drop, so it's important to get that in by that point. Um, in the past, I've always done it at the end, but you know things are changing so quickly. Maybe it's worth adopting that, um, and you know maybe just testing it out as well. That's the whole thing. Like video is all about testing and trying things out and uh, and seeing what works. So from there, um, you also then want to make sure you're engaging with your audience when you post your videos. So whenever I post a video, uh, which isn't all that often lately, something I need to improve on uh, is that I always block out half an hour to an hour, depending on kind of the importance of the video and how much time I've spent on it um, and how much engagement I'm hoping to gain from it, uh, just, to, just to engage with people, just to reply to comments, ask questions, um, because the more you do that within that first hour, the more the algorithm will push your video higher up, which means it will show up in more places and gain you more results. So that's a really important one. I appreciate it. there's a lot we covered in this. So, you know, I hope it's not overwhelming. Um, I'll share these slides as well. So do feel free to come back. And of course, we'll have the video recorded too. So as well, it's important to just check in with your analytics, um, just see how your video is performing, because that will give you better insight as to what worked, what didn't work, you know, where the attention was dropping off, where it peaked, um, who's watching it, um, further, you know, build your understanding of what kind of audiences are resonating with these types of videos. Um, and that will better inform your decisions for the videos you make in the future. So top tips from this workshop, we've got number one, get your message across in the first third of the video. That is crucial. Um, that is yeah, really important. And you know what, if you find that you're, you, you do that and you're planning it and you've got it in the first third and actually that almost covers everything you need, then don't even worry about the second, you know, the, the second and, uh, and third parts of it, because whatever goes in that video has to be pure, you know, it has to be in there, right? If you post a video and there's anything in there that feels that it goes on, it waffles, whatever, um, you're going to lose that attention span. So from there, like, yeah, keeping it short and sweet, right? Um, be enthusiastic. Now, something that it may seem hard to do at first, but the more you do, the more comfortable you get, the more you practice some of those um, tips I've put in there with the confidence and delivery, the more you'll find that you're finding it easier to be enthusiastic. Um, and the mantra, framing, lighting, audio, background, which I realize now that's actually the wrong way around in that, but there we go. Framing, lighting, audio, background. Um, yeah, just keep saying it, you know, setting up a shot. What have I got to do? Framing, lighting, audio, background. Makes it simple. Plan, super important. You know, yes, there is such a thing as planning too much. You have to surrender yourself to the moment. You have to just put your plan away and just do it. Um, but if you've gone through that process, then you'll find yourself far more prepared um, in the moment when you're filming and then lastly be yourself and try to have fun now ultimately it is something that can be quite fun um, yeah those first few times are going to be difficult but once you've got into the swing of it and this is the thing when you actually put your video out and you see that it's getting engagement you see that people resonate with it and most importantly you see that it's making a positive impact um, that's where the fun comes you know that's when you're going to get that little like you know that giddy feeling you're going to get that little kind of boost of wow like i want to do that again um, and you'll soon find that you're, you're enjoying the process. Also, let me just check. I think this might be the end of it. Right, that's the end of the presentation anyway. But um, if I just stop sharing that and then go to the main speaker view. So um, one thing that I've not really covered in this, right, is the act of actually doing this like with people. Um, it makes a huge difference. So what I'd actually recommend is that if you know if you take all of these things that I've, I've suggested on board and go out and implement them and you know try recording your videos, um, but but find an accountability partner. That's what I'd recommend. Maybe it's someone that sat through this workshop with you. Uh, maybe it's someone in the Cambridge um, social media meetup group. 
um, just to help give you that motivation because I've sat through so many of these myself of all different subjects and I've left and I've been like, okay, that's great. I've got it, you know, wicked, let's go, let's go. I'm inspired, I'm motivated, let's go. Okay, let me just do this thing, I'll get it done and then I'll get back to it. Or, oh, you know, I need to, um, all this task has come up, but I'll get back to that afterwards. And then I find next thing, you know, weeks pass, you know, months pass and, and you don't do it right. Whereas if you've got someone that's in the same situation as you, that's in the same stage of their video journey, um, you know, just steering you, you know, you know, giving you that pro, oh, you know, did you get that thing done? Oh, let's get it done by this week. Seeing them get it done will make you feel that extra level of motivation to do it yourself. Um, also, I've got like a little challenge that I'll set you as well um, to, to go and do next is I, I'd recommend the videos you create next, keeping it super simple and following these um, subjects. So I do a video where you simply introduce yourself and just talk a little bit about what it is you do. Right. Um, and don't worry about putting it out anywhere, but just record it. So it's there. The second one I do is I would talk about your why. Why is it you do what you do? You know, why do you exist as, as a business? Um, what is it you hope to achieve? What are your core values? That kind of stuff. Um, thirdly, I'd talk about a situation whereby you've been able to help someone and it doesn't have to be in your business. It can just be anything in general through life. Just, you know, cast your mind back to where you've really been able to help someone um, and just talk about it. And there's no duration. There's no limit in this. It, you can talk for as long as you like. Um, Thirdly, I'll talk about maybe, maybe a, a frequently asked question um, that you get as, as your business. Um, it could be anything. Just simply answer it in a question. Uh, sorry, in a video. And then finally, I would do another one whereby I would talk about what it is you hope to achieve. Um, what it is you hope to achieve through your video journey. Just talk about that a little bit on camera as well. Um, and the reason I'm, I'm suggesting you, you try this is that you will find that you're just going to start getting used to that. Um, and having that, having that comfort of knowing that it doesn't need to go out anywhere will help immensely as well. So it's all too easy to take this information on board and say, right, let's just go, let's do it. It's going to go out. I'm going to record a video. It's going to go out. That's a lot of pressure if you haven't done that before. Um, so instead, yeah, just record them. Don't worry about putting them out anywhere. But what I would recommend is just finding someone else to do this alongside with you and maybe send those videos to that person if you feel comfortable to. Or maybe do a first series of them, you know, think about it, look at them, do it again, send it then when you're comfortable to. Get that feedback. Um, the more positive feedback, which 100% you will get, by the way, um, the more you can get of that before you actually post these videos out to public um, on your business pages, on your personal brand pages, the more confidence you'll have when it comes to actually doing that. Um, one of the things I think we put in the, in the bullet points for this talk is about learning to let go. That is probably the hardest part is you've got your video, you've done it, you know, you feel kind of happy about it. You're like, you know, a little bit like, I don't know yet. Actually pressing that go button, the more fuel you can give yourself with regards to confidence from speaking to other people, from hearing that feedback, from trusted collaborators and, and that kind of stuff, the more happy you're going to be about pressing that go. And I 100% promise you now, you will, you will get that positive feedback um, and you will feel so much happier when you press that go button and you've seen the engagement is driving. Um, and you'd be surprised at what positive impact it might have on someone else because that's the, the, the biggest, I think, you know, benefit of video is that while you're sitting in that chair like I am right now, recording that video, you never know what effect that might have on someone. Um, and that to me is, is, I think it's incredible. So yeah, that, that's, I think that's pretty much everything. I actually managed to finish it. I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to do two hours, but there you go. I did it. That's a lot of talking. Cool. It's a lot right. of talking. It's yeah. fantastic. Thank oh. you. If we have any questions, then let us know. Uh, we still have a couple more minutes and we're happy to answer all of them. I would say if there's anyone who's looking for a video accountability partner, then mm. give us a shout in the Cambridge Social Media Facebook group where um, there is our team and there are other members who we know are making videos who will be happy to join in. If yeah. you want to share and if you feel confident enough to share the video in a small, private, friendly, supportive group, feel free to share the video in our, in our group and be like, hey, I've watched your webinar, I've watched your workshop, I've tried this, could you give me some feedback, could you let me know? And yes, I can guarantee you will get some fantastic, positive, supportive feedback. 
Absolutely. as well as you know if there is something constructive that you will get a constructive feedback but i would like to encourage everyone if you're not feeling confident enough to go live publicly just yet find a group it doesn't have to be our group i'm sure you're a member of lots of other groups you might have bigger smaller groups try mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. try sharing a simple video there just to get yourself and one of the mantras that i keep repeating to myself is mm -hmm that the video that I record and share will always get better results than the one that I don't record or don't share. Because yes, perfection is just a fairy tale. It will never be perfect. I like things being perfect. Um, but with video, I've always found out that if I do get it out there, it always gets way better results. Well, it gets a way better results than I expected, but mainly it always gets better results than if you don't do anything. Absolutely, yeah. That's the thing. That's, yeah. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. Um, yeah, what you were saying as well about finding a group, you know, even make your own, you know, like maybe there's a few of you, you can just create your own private Facebook group and upload your videos there. Um, it's, yeah, something to consider. And as I mentioned earlier, like I'm... Um, I'm in talk at the moment. I'm developing the next video challenge. Um, I don't know what it looks like yet. I might make a few differences, but you know, if anyone is at all interested in um, in participating that and learn a bit more about that, um, do feel free to get in touch. Um, I'm sure. Yeah, my details will be somewhere. Uh, so yeah. Yep. Once you have it all together, you share yeah. your information with us, and I will always share it with everyone in the community. So awesome. if you're considering in getting some accountability and really getting serious. I've been to Tom's first challenge and it was fantastic. I've done videos awesome, before, but I always go through periods of I do videos, I realize it's not a difficult mm. and for whatever reason I stop and then it feels like I've forgotten everything. And then I kind of starting out from a scratch. So having yeah. these kind of people and accountability groups around are very helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I totally relate to that as well. When you kind of stop for a while, it's, you know, you get that feeling of like, you're starting from scratch, you've forgotten things, it comes back. But if you can be consistent, then that is the key. Even if you're consistently recording videos that aren't even going anywhere, let's say that you, you don't plan on doing, you know, videos, maybe you've got a launch for a product, but it's not happening for a, a few months, or a couple you know, a couple months, then don't lose that, you know, even if you're not putting them out all the time, just keep doing it, keep building that kind of consistent pattern. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's a number one kind of rule there. Consistency for sure. Just want to say thanks as well for the comments. I'm just reading through these. It's really nice. I'm, you know, I'm glad it, uh, I'm glad you guys found value in it. Um, I've enjoyed it as well. Like I say, I was pretty nervous about doing this, but I have actually thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't, I definitely haven't spoken this much in my entire life. I need to, uh, yeah, rest my vocal cords now. <laughs> But yeah, thanks a lot for having me, Lenka. Thanks, uh, you know, to everyone for joining us. Sorry again, I wasn't able to make the last one. Um, but yeah, I hope uh, hope everyone's enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for tuning in. It's better. We get two workshops where we get two, you know, follow up sessions where we learn it, right? strategically and more practically. So this is fantastic. So mm. thank you, everyone. It's been wonderful today. And if you ever have any questions about anything, then obviously come and join us in the group. Let us know. We have all our experts available there. So if there are any questions, we will tag them. We will bring their questions to their attention and they mm -hmm. will definitely be more than happy to help out. Tom has touched on it a couple of times in case you haven't heard. We're running this year's Cambridge Social Media Day in November where it's our annual conference when you will be able to learn a lot more about came about social media marketing and we do have a couple practical sessions we have a youtube session so if you want to learn more about actually making a youtube channel it will be there but we have sessions about linkedin content planning and all of that so that will be sent in your email afterwards or just head over to our website cambridgesocial.media Sophie says she's got her ticket. Can't wait. Oh, awesome. Yay. Amazing. Can't wait to see you there, guys. Um, but thank you so much for hanging out here with us tonight and have a lovely rest of the day. Have a lovely rest of the week. And I can't wait to see your videos. Absolutely. Likewise. That's awesome. Thanks a lot, everyone. Awesome. Bye, guys. See you later.